I say, Rhonda Holmes, it's very mysterious. Sir Charles, Sir Charles Baskerville, found dead, and all around him, the tracks of a gigantic hound. Yes, very mysterious. Now I know, Rhonda Holmes, that in your cases, you don't believe in anything supernatural. But in this case, a supernatural explanation is, well, it's tempting to, it's tempting to expect the supernatural. No, you're right. It must be something rational. There must be a rational explanation for Sir Charles' death. Well, we'll have to dig into the case, the case of the Hound of the Baskervilles. Hello, my friends, and welcome. Welcome to Sherlock Saturday. Sherlock Saturday, which I'm so good about doing every Saturday. I can't remember the last time I did a Sherlock Saturday, but it makes its triumphant return today. I figure, you know, I'll do one of these every six or seven months. Sure, I will. So anyway, Sherlock Saturday has returned with possibly the greatest Sherlock Holmes story ever told. The Hound of the Baskervilles. The Hound of the Baskervilles. So let's talk about this story. You know, as I was getting ready to do this, I realized that I can't give too much away of the plot once the plot gets going. Because this is one of those stories. This is the Sherlock Holmes story. If you only read one, The Hound of the Baskervilles is probably the story to read because it's probably the best Sherlock Holmes story. I think it's the best Sherlock Holmes story. A lot of people think it is. Not everyone, but it's an excellent Sherlock Holmes story, that's for sure. One of the four Sherlock Holmes novels. Uh, so this was published in the Strand magazine, but it was serialized. It was serialized from August 1901 to April 1902. Uh, and so one of the interesting things about this story is that Sherlock Holmes was dead at the time. What you say? How can Sherlock Holmes be in a Sherlock Holmes novel when he's dead? Is this a zombie Sherlock Holmes? No, that would be interesting, but it's not a zombie Sherlock Holmes. So famously, Sir Arthur Conan Doyle got kind of sick of writing Sherlock Holmes all the time and killed him off uh, in, the, in, the, in one of his Sherlock Holmes stories, the final problem, I believe. Uh, and of course, there was a huge outcry. Everybody wanted more Sherlock Holmes. So eventually, Sir Arthur Conan Doyle decided, you know what, I'm going to bring back Sherlock Holmes, but he's not going to bring him back to life because, you know, he's dead. He did, of course, bring him back to life uh, later. But at this point, he's still dead. So he has to set this story in the past. So Watson tells this Sherlock Holmes adventure of Sherlock Holmes uh, from their time uh, when, when they uh, worked together in the past. And this is not without precedent. Uh, famously, Alan Quartermain in H. Ryder Haggard's Alan Quartermain's uh, series died in the second book. And he was never brought back. But they just, you know, every, every Alan Quartermain story after that was in the past. You know, they were all prequels. Uh, so it's not, it's not without precedent, this sort of thing. So Sherlock, this is a sto Sherlock Holmes story in the past. Uh, when Dr. James Mortimer calls on Sherlock Holmes because he's got a real problem. See, recently, uh, Sir Baskerville, uh, Sir Charles Baskerville, was found dead uh, on his estate uh, on the moors. And he has a terrible look of terror upon his face. It looks like it must be natural causes, but all around the body are, are prints, footprints of a hound, a gigantic hound, you know, a really big dog. So apparently there is a curse. The family, the Baskerville family is cursed, apparently. Uh, long ago, a Baskerville did a really terrible thing and was cursed with you know, 
this monstrous hound, uh, which apparently is supernatural and came out of nowhere and, you know, killed the current Sir Baskerville. At least, you know, that's a theory. But of course that would depend upon the supernatural. And Sherlock Holmes, he's not into, into the supernatural. He's not into that weird, wacky stuff. Not like Sir Arthur Conan Doyle was. Um, Sherlock Holmes was a bit more sensible than that. So he knew there had to be a rational explanation. But what could it possibly be? Because, you know, as you get along in this story, it sure seems like it's something supernatural. That's odd. I thought I heard something. I'm hearing things. Anyway, so the real problem is that there's a new Sir Baskerville, Sir Henry Baskerville, is inheriting this place. And of course, the fear is that Sir Henry is going to be killed off by this giant ghost dog thing, just like Charles was. Well, Sherlock Holmes and Watson, they can't let that happen. And they got to find out what happened to Sir Charles anyway. So they got to travel uh, to, the Basker to the Baskerville estate on the moors and solve the mystery. Now, there's a lot of stuff going on in this novel. There's a ton of interesting characters. It's, re it's, it's a really good one. And I don't want to give too much more of the plot away. I just gave you the setup, you know. And it's a great setup. And this hound, you know, which does, you know, I will spoil that the hound does reappear, whatever it might be. Is it supernatural? I don't know. Rhonda Holmes is on the case right now, but probably not. It's probably not a supernatural explanation. You know, like I said, Holmes didn't mess with that kind of thing. But if it was, who knows? So Sherlock Holmes does solve the case, and it's a brilliant case. One of the best Sherlock Holmes cases. Really well written. Uh, and Watson plays a prominent part in this, which is nice. I'm a big fan of Watson. Uh, Sherlock Holmes kind of disappears for a little bit in this novel. Uh, but it's just an excellent story, a really great story. And the nice thing about it is perhaps writing this, uh, Sir Arthur Conan Doyle got a taste for writing Holmes again because he did bring Sherlock Holmes back uh, for a series of stories, uh, the so series of stories which you could find in The Return of Sherlock Holmes. Uh, Fantastic stuff, the Hound of the Baskervilles. So, that was your Sherlock Saturday for today. I'm going to try to get up a Sunday penguin. Uh, we'll see. We'll see how successful I am. In the meantime, I will see you next time here at Stately Vaughn Manor. Bye, guys.